have you ever wanted to guest on a podcast like this one that you're listening to right now? Well, you can. You can definitely do this by visiting a website called Podmatch, where you can sign up and be available for all different types of podcasts that you can guest on. Or you can even search for a podcast and say, I want to, I want to guest on your podcast. I think we'd be a good match. So if you want to do this, you can go to our unique link, which is joinpodmatch.com forward slash reality. And you can sign up and do exactly that. And you can find us and you can guest on our podcast. So again, that unique link is www.joinpodmatch.com. That's J-O-I-N-P-O-D-M-A-T-C-H dot com forward slash reality, R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A, and you can be a guest on our podcast. Welcome to Reality D Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we're going to be discussing The Last Resort. So I don't think we have anything really at the top of the episode that needs to be discussed. I think we're just going to jump right in to the episode. So season one, episode 12 the final show, uh, The Last Walk is what it's called. We are with Oswalu and he says that, um, like kind of back to their conversation between him and Kalani. And he says that, you know, if you want, um, like want to do the divorce right away, then 100% we'll do it right away. Um, and cause we saw her ask the question of what do you want? And he says um, what he wants is to put the boys first. And Kalani says nothing will change with their family dynamic. He'll obviously be able to see the boys whenever he wants. Um, and Kalani is definitely having conflicting emotions right now, which is 100% normal. I mean, those are emotions that you have, even if you don't have kids, when you are now deciding to go through a divorce and that's, are you making the right decision? You know, do you really want to move on? You have those conflicting emotions for sure. Asuelo says that he is struggling to process this, even though he's, you know, trying to be strong in this moment. Um... Yeah, I get it. I mean, I, like I said, I've been very open with the fact that I was the one who initiated my divorce and I went through probably a lot of the same emotions that Kalani is experiencing, um, at least on camera anyways. Hospitalist seems to be accepting this a little easier than my ex-husband did shouldn't make the process any easier initially, but it is tough to be strong through the process. But once you're on the other side of it, once all of the drama is over and you've processed and everything, it gets easier. It does. Um, so now we're at the final group session. So Jovi and Yara, they're going to go first. Jovi explains, you know, and again, let me just preface here. I'm not talking about Ed and Liz, and I'm not talking about Angela and Michael. I don't care about either one of these people, honestly, to be totally honest with you. Um, so I will be skipping them in the group session, and I will be skipping them at the ceremony at the end as well, because I don't care. Um, okay, so... 
Jovi explains what happened um, on the boat and everything because Yara doesn't want to. They did kind of ask Yara first and she says, can you ask him first? Or like, I don't, or she said, I don't want to talk about it or something around those lines. She said she was shut, she shut down. She didn't want to talk about it. Um, and she doesn't want to talk about how she feels. She, she's just, she's, she's not there, but she does say that she feels ashamed and embarrassed by it all. Um, she doesn't want people to call her stupid because uh, her husband prefers other women at the strip club. This is such an insight into her mind because for me watching this show, and I feel like for a lot of people who watch the show have been watching their journey from the very beginning, I knew he was trash. <laughs> I won't say Joe he's trash. He proved to not be trash, but I always felt he was the one that was going to be fucking messy from even before their season aired when we see commercials and shit. We didn't know how messy, but I don't blame her or think she's stupid for wanting to be with somebody when it's fine most of the time, but then there's that little percentage where he prefers to go to the fucking strip club and drink with his friends. I, I, I don't think that's necessarily stupid, especially when you've been with someone for so long and you guys are on vacation mode the other times that you've been together, except for when you came here to marry him. So I don't, I don't think she's stupid. If anyone thinks that she's the stupid one for his actions, needs to process that. So it, it, I don't blame her for anything or think she's dumb or think she needs to hold any responsibility for another person's actions. You can't control them. You can control yourself, though. And I know it goes so much deeper for her. And we will get to it in, in a little bit. Um, so, um, he asks, like, how do we get past this? And one of them says, what about forgiveness? Oh, sorry. So Dr. Petey actually says, what about forgiveness? Um, and says to Yara, it's about you, not him. And Yara doesn't know. Um, she just needs time to process. Fair. So now we're talking about Kalani and Osweiler. Really. So how are they doing, they ask? Well, Kalani feels heartbroken and upset. And they haven't process processed everything. Um, you know, so they, they know they're working that out. And I also want to say this again. I, I want to really stress this. And I hope my listeners wouldn't say, you know, anything negative about this, but I feel like some ignorant person will say, oh, what is right? Does she have to feel heartbroken or upset? She's the one that's initiating the divorce. She's the one that ran off with Dallas, which I already put my thoughts out there with Dallas and, and all that. You know, she's the one that's, that's doing this. Well, no. Yes and no. Australia was the one that caused this drama in the first place because he couldn't keep his hands and dick to himself. So this is him that's doing this. But on the other hand, is she the one initiating divorce? Yes, because she's choosing her own happiness. But that doesn't mean that she's not going to feel heartbroken. Is not going to feel hurt by what's happening, even though she's the one that's doing it. And that in and of itself is going to be confusing for her because it was confusing for me. And I'm like, why do I have the right to feel heartbroken and upset? Because at the end of the day, you're still mourning a relationship that you had and thought you would have going forward. So it it's confusing for in and of itself with that emotion for herself. She doesn't need ignorant people coming at her and saying, why, why do you feel this way when you're the one that's doing it? And she doesn't need that on top of it. And apparently people have been sending her really hateful things 
and that's fucked up. Don't, don't fucking do that. But I do understand the emotions that she is experiencing and it's so confusing. It's even 10 times more confusing when you're in another relationship, you know, it's better for you and you still feel selfish. You still feel horrible that you have this happiness with someone else while going through a divorce and processing those emotions. I mean, I had to go to fucking therapy. She's probably going to go to fucking therapy and there's children involved too. So it's just even more complicated. So, it, you know, I would say don't message these people in the first place. But secondly, I would say just be kind. I think any ignorant person just needs to be told to be kind to people. Um, and just have, you may not be able to, um, have sympathy and or empathy, but just be kind. That's it. That's all. Then um, Kalani says that they have figured out that they are not going to be able to stay together. So, because no one else has known about this yet. So they're, they're telling everybody in the group that they've chosen divorce. Um, and for some reason, some odd reason, Jovi's shocked by this. And I said, why? Jovi, why are you shocked by this? This isn't shocking at all. I'm not shocked. From the moment that we found out that he cheated on her while in Samoa, and we at least had the knowledge that he had cheated, or in her mind had cheated before, that's before we found out that, no, he really was. So we have, I knew from that moment that there was a fucking hall pass involved. And she took that hall pass and ran with it. That I knew that this was not going to work out for them. The fa And the fact that she would say things like, I don't like when he touches me. I feel weird when he touches me or tries to hug me or show affection or anything like that. I knew from that point she has the ick. And it's not to say that it's an ick of like, Ew, I don't like that. This ick is so different. This ick is, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. And I cannot look past the fact that you have constantly cheated on me. You have not learned your lesson. Now I've moved on to some extent with somebody else and I've experienced what it really can be. And now I can't go back to how it could be with you. It's, it's not, it's, it's not an easy thing. So I knew from then that she wasn't going to stay with him because I've not like that, not quite like that, but I've experienced things of my ex trying to, you know, get us back together and me at times thinking, okay, maybe that's possible. Let's see but really not being able to be all in on, on it and feeling really weird because I hadn't been in a romantic relationship with him at those times for years. And the fact that I know what it's like to be on the other side, to be in love with someone else. And although me and, and that, and that person were not quite where we needed to be, um, and we were having some awkward situations on that end. I knew I didn't want to be with my ex. So it it's hard to go back to being all hubby dovey with the person. Once you've been on the other side, or you can see in this case the grass is greener. Um so I don't know why Joey was shocked. <laughs> it's the moral of my story. Um um, then, uh, so this, again, I just want to again stress the only times that I'm going to talk about anything having to do with Ed or Angela or Liz or whatever is if it makes sense for this. And I did think what Ed said to Oswalu here was pretty perfect. I hate myself, but I do think it's pretty perfect just because Ed has been exactly in his shoes 
exactly in his shoes, because if we remember, Ed was married to his daughter's mom. He cheated on his daughter's mom, and they divorced when his daughter, I think, was very pretty fairly young. So I, I, I do think what he said to him was pretty perfect here. So those are the only times I'm going to talk about these people if I have to. So Ed um, tells Australia, or first tells Kalani, I'm not worried about you. I know you're going to be okay. But Asuelu, you know, I want to tell you this. I want to give you advice. And he says, um, I want to give you advice because um, I've been through this before. And he says, your kids will be your strength. And he tells him it will get better, even though it feels like it won't. It will get better. Then the therapists give them cards that they're going to write down the reasons on um, why they would recommit or why they wouldn't. And I guess in Kalani and Asuelu's, uh a situation, it would be kind of more of recommitting to something new. Um, and so they will be reading their thoughts at the ceremony, which will be the next day. And then Neil Jovi just gets up and just runs right off. He's just gone. I'm like, sir, Yara says that he's gonna, he's just like running to the bar. Of course he is. Anyway, so then we see the next day, Dr. Petey is coming to talk to Yara. And Yara tells Petey, now she's ready to tell her what happened on the boat from her perspective. And Petey asks, you know, why do you feel that you have to have shame for his actions? And her simple response is, he's my husband and the father of my, my, my daughter. And she just feels responsible for what he does. And she does, ex- to me, this is foreign because I'm like, but you're not responsible for what he does. Um... I'd be damned if I'm gonna be his like if thank God, but if if my man was like this and he decided that it's a good idea to go to the strip club constantly, like that's gonna piss me off for sure. Like I know everyone thinks things very differently. Some people might think that going to the strip club isn't cheating or isn't a problem or whatever. Um, like constantly or something. Or some people think you know, porn can be considered cheating or not be considered cheating. Everyone's thing is different in what they're willing to accept. I'm okay with my, my boyfriend watching porn. I don't care because there are worse things he could do. <laughs> I don't give a shit if he does or he doesn't. Um, and the, I would have a problem with the frequency if he were to do it all the time or do it in place of our intimacy, like if it starts to encroach on our intimacy, then I would have a problem 100%. Now, let's put that to the strip club. If the strip club were to become a problem and it's encroaching on your relationship, and in this case, it is, for Yara, it is encroaching on their relationship. And maybe it's encroaching on their, and well, actually it doesn't look like it's encroaching on their intimacy. <laughs> They're the ones that probably were fucking the most <laughs> on this trip. So I don't know how much it's necessarily encroaching on their intimacy, but it definitely is encroaching on their relationship in Yara's mind. But what I can maybe understand having the responsibility of not allowing that to happen but you can't have responsibility for his actions. All you can do is say, I don't like this, which she has many times. I don't want you going at all or as much, which she has. And that'd be enough. And at that time, it's up to him. And that's the thing that drives me nuts about Jovi is it's not like this conversation is new. We've heard this conversation of him going to the strip club constantly, being a problem from the 90 day OG season that they were on, from the HEA season that they were on, two HEA seasons I think that they were on, and now this one. 
now this iteration. And it's like, how many times, Joey, do you need to be fucking told that your wife doesn't like you going to the fucking strip club? Stop fucking going. And I'll get to that a little bit more too when she talks to him because his response to her, one particular thing he says to her, it's kind of like, are you fucking kidding me, Jovi? Like, I'll get to it. So let's finish up here. So she also feels this way about her family because Dr. Petey does ask, like, do you feel this way about your, like, about your family as well? Like, other members of your, of your family? Um, that if they are doing something that you think isn't right, that you take on responsibility for their actions. And she says, yeah, sometimes she does. Okay, so we're seeing a pattern here. So it's not just about Jovi, it's just maybe more cultural. And she explains this. She says that um, where I grew up, you had to be perfect, which we've heard this kind of before, um, especially if you were a girl. You had to be perfect and you were, would have made feel, sorry, you would feel ashamed about, um, certain things that you might do. And her mom would make fun of her about her being chunky, which again, we've heard this before. I've already said, like, I understand that's her mother, but fuck that. That's fucking bullshit. Your parents supposed to be your safe space. And I don't know if this, I know she says this is where she comes from. I'm actually very curious to know if this is where she quote unquote comes from or where, or just her family. Because I mean, I can maybe see that being a situation for like Natalie, but I don't know if that's necessarily something Natalie has just instilled in herself or if her mom instilled that because her mom seems absolutely incredible. So I can't even picture her mom saying things like this to her. Um, but I actually do work with a Ukrainian woman and I would actually want to know if, if that is true, if this is something that happens in Ukraine. Um, so I might, I might ask her next time I see her, I haven't seen her lately. I don't know if she listens to the podcast, but you know, <laughs> um, but I will, I will talk to her and I will report back because I'm actually very curious if this is something that is a cultural thing or if this was Yara's family. So hopefully I remember next time I see her and I will report back. Okay. <laughs> so, um, her sister would also tell her that when she gets pregnant, she would be so big because she's so chunky. The fuck? First of all, can I just say this? Every little kid is chunky when they're kids because, you know, we call that baby fat. You grow out of that and you turn, you come, you become what you're supposed to be. Um, so I, I, or whatever the body type is, so I, I, I to, to, bully, to bully someone for their chunkiness when maybe they're still having their baby fat is fucking ridiculous. It's so fucking stupid. I, I hate to trash their culture if that is cultural, but I just think that is not, that's not okay. That's not okay because look at this. Look at what this has created. Um so um she goes on to give an example of something um that her mother would say to her. For example, the clothes that she was wearing. Her mom might say something about it being too open and why are you should feel ashamed or do you feel ashamed for it? wearing something like this. So Dr. P does this amazing thing where she says to her, okay, so instead of feeling the shame for the clothes that you're wearing, what would you say in response instead? And she says that 
well, I would just say that I like wearing it. She's like, okay, that's it. That is the only thing that you need to say. I like wearing this. I don't feel ashamed about wearing it. She has a banging fucking body. Why wouldn't she? So like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. So then Dr. P says, okay, so let's use this example that happened on the boat. Instead of feeling ashamed and embarrassed for what Jovi did to you, what, what could you say instead? And you can tell that Yara was a little struggling a little bit more with this, but she does say that that she will stick to feeling mad at him because at the end of the day, she says that I'm mad at him. So that's the feeling I should have. But the insecurities that I feel about myself, that's more because of the women at the strip clubs. They have no part in what's happening here because the problem isn't the women who are doing their job and trying to make fucking money. It's not about them. It's about him going at all and preferring them or at least wanting to go. Like, I I don't think it's necessarily that Jovi prefers them. I don't think it's that. I just think he has absolutely no fucking idea um, what's happening around him and if this is even acceptable. Him saying shit like, you know, it's an American thing to do to go to a ship club. No, it fucking isn't. Like, that's if that's the case, then we would have a bunch of American men going to the ship club as often as you do, Jovi. Like, come on now. So, yeah, she says, I just need to stick to the the, the fundamental, the, the main emotion of, I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him. And forget the insecurities. So, she says she does feel a little better um, about having a conversation with him. Do you want to spice up your love life? Well, you can make that happen by going to Love Shop, where you can get sorts of different things, whether it's for both you and your partner, or just for yourself. For solo play, you can get things, all types of vibrators, maybe more kinky type toys, or you can just buy what every person may need, like lingerie, or protection, or even just something to make it a little more fun, like games or novelty things. You can do all of this by going to Love Shop, and you can use our unique coupon code REALITYT2 to get 10% on anything your hearts desire. So that's loveshop.ca, L-O-V-E-S-H-O-P dot C-A, and use our unique coupon code REALITY2, that's R-E-A-L-I-T-E-A, and the number 2. So now we see her talking to him and right off the bat, he apologizes for going to the strip club and texting the girl. And, you know, he just felt like it would be a fun time. So her first question was to him, do you want to be with her? He says, no, I don't want to be with her. But can, Joey, can you understand why she thinks that? Because this isn't just some random stripper that you got her number from. This is a person you actually clearly had some sort of relationship with because you went on a fucking trip to Jamaica with her. So do you understand, Joey, why she feels that maybe you may want to be with her? Even if that's so fucking outlandish and so crazy for, I think it's crazy that she would even think that because how could he ever pick that person over you? You're gorgeous. And you're the mother of his child, of his, of his child. And hopefully, you know, in the future, more children, because that's what he wants. But you know, I, I understand though why she thinks that because this isn't a random chick. This is something you had a relationship with. Forget the fact that she's a stripper. You had a relationship with her. She explains how this makes her feel. Um, and she says, like, it makes me feel insecure. You know that I have, 
I mean, in all honesty, I don't know if I'd go as far as her having body dysmorphia, but I, I wonder if that is what's going on here because she has this, she, she doesn't see herself in the same way as maybe we as a viewer see her or Jovi sees her or, you know, whatever the case may be. I think she is really struggling. So she says, you know, I have insecurities. You know that I can you know, just, just, we know she's done procedures. We clearly, because the person who she was in her early twenties is not who she is, what she looks like now. And she's had these procedures. She says, you know, I go to the gym all the time to make sure that I, I, I stay the way I look. She's like, you know, I have these insecurities. So then you go to the strip club and that makes me feel really bad. Like, why would you want to put me through that? You know, she says it makes her feel upset. And he says, I didn't know it was like that. And he says, if I knew, I wouldn't be going to the strip club. And this is the thing that he said that I'm like, are you kidding me? It doesn't matter if she, okay, as far as I'm concerned, yes. Should she maybe have explained to you how this makes her feel when you go to the strip club, how that affects her image of herself and her self-esteem? Yes, maybe, sure. But that's like putting the blame on her for not telling you that she doesn't like you on a strip club. Sir, she has been telling you multitude of times, and that's on fucking camera. We don't know what happens off camera. She's been telling you so many times, I don't like that you go to the strip club. Stop going to the fucking strip club. And you, that's not enough for you, apparently. No, no, no. You, as, as far as I'm concerned, the minute your wife tells you, don't do something because I don't like it, that's it. That's all you need. That's all you need. Now, there's certain things that, you know, I don't agree with because I know some people, like if someone has a hobby they like to do or whatever, and they have a problem, like if their wife or girlfriend or whoever has a problem with that, I don't, I don't like that because everyone needs an outlet. Um... So, not this. This isn't the outlet you need to be having. When I mean outlet, I mean like, you might like to play video games or watch sports or golf or something, you know? Stuff like that. Like, don't take that away from your partner. But take this shit away from your partner. And that should be all I need to tell you and you get it. Um... So, um, he just thought that it was her being protective, he says. Fucking. Okay. Um, then he promises that he won't go anymore. And she says, but you have done this before. You have promised me you won't go. And then you don't keep your promise. So can you actually keep your promise? Please think through what you're saying before you say it because like you've done this before and you've always backpedaled you know so i get it um anyway so now we're with um kalani and kalini has showed up and kalani says it's hard even though she knew this was gonna be a possibility um, and she says breakups are hard, especially marriages. And that's just true. Colony, oh God, Colini is just being supportive at this point. She asks um, how Oswaldo is doing. Not well, bitch. Not well. <laughs> um, then Colony asks Colini if she um, can help her with writing stuff down for on the cards for the ceremony and she says this feels really weird because the last time i wrote vows or said vows was at my wedding and now i'm getting a divorce so you know she sees the irony um and she says even though this is my idea it's still hard and i said it's gonna be hard 
it's like I've, like I said before, it's it's gonna be hard. Um. So then Kalani comes to Angela's room, and Angela says, "You deserve happiness, and I'm happy you're choosing happiness over misery." Is it like Oswalu? But he did this, like you know. Um. Then Yara comes. And Yara says that she is kind of ready, but she's nervous. The women say, you know, men would knock down doors for her. They probably would kill for her. So why isn't Jovi, like, appreciating what he has? And Galani says, like, why isn't he making her feel like the bad bitch she is? That's his responsibility to build up her confidence and her self esteem. Um, It's not fully his job, but it's as her husband, he should always make sure she feels great about herself. And honestly, it's probably one of the easiest things your partner can do, just by loving you and prioritizing you. It's just it's just that simple. So it's it's. Uh, yeah, so they compliment her and say that she's beautiful and all of that. And you can just tell, like, she needed to hear it and it makes her smile. Then Liz comes, not dressed. Her hair is done, though, but she's not dressed. She says she's not feeling right. And she um, kind of says that she's not really happy about the dress that she's picked. She's like, the dress is nice. It's like a like a summer dress, but it's it's not perfect. And um yeah, so she's just kind of in her feelings about that. Then Angela says she might have a dress for her that she can that she can use. It's brand new, hasn't been worn. Um, so you know it might it might work out. And she says if you want it, or if you if you like it and you want it, it's yours. They walk into the room part of her suite and they see the blow up a doll from the karma sutra classes just in her bed (laughs) oh god anyway um then liz comes out the dress looks gorgeous on her um and she says that i love you mima (laughs) because she came through so also while they're I don't know if this was while they were waiting for us to come out or what, but they find like wigs on Angela's bed and we see Kalani um, becoming Angela and oh great. The braids though can fuck right off. Can I, I'm I'm kind of, I'm going to say this and this is, and I don't care about the whole, like I care about everything having to do with like appropriating other cultures and stuff like that. I care about that. But I have always had an issue with people of not of not being black wearing braids, dreads, anything like that. Because you look ridiculous. Really and truly. It's really for the dreads, it's the religious aspect of things for me. Because people don't realize dreadlocks is a form of religious of a religious thing that people do being Rastafarian. So that drives me even more nuts than anything else. There's a line, actually, if you are Jamaican, you might know this. This actually comes from a song, but there is a a song out there where it says, you don't have to be dread to be Rasta. By God, you better, if you have dreads, you better be Rasta. That That's, I added that piece in. (laughs) So I have a bigger issue with that. But braids, I'm like, when I see, this might sound bad for me to say, but when I see Caucasian people wearing braids, I'm like, you look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, really and truly. Because I know it's fake, which makes it even worse. And at the same time, it's like, black people have the hair to do real braids. It's just how it is. Our hair is coarse enough that we can do that. White people don't have that. Uh, They just don't. So when I see people, it's like, okay, especially 
especially with Angela, I feel like you just have braids because you're fucking a black man. You fuck the black man. I don't care. It doesn't mean you to have fucking braids on top of it. You look fucking ridiculous. I and mean, we've seen her wear the braids before. You look fucking ridiculous. I'm going to move on. It's the recommitment ceremony and it's beginning. The men show up first and then the women. And we see Michael is on his dick. Um, and again. And also, he's not okay during this. Like, you can just tell on his face. He, he's he's not okay. So anyway, Oswalu and Galani. Galani says she commits to being a better friend. And um, building a friendship with him. Communicating gently and being patient. Um, be there for each other and co-parent well and put the kids first. Oswaldo says um, he feels like this is the worst day of his life, but he does commit to co-parenting well and appreciates everything she has done for him and apologizes for everything he has done. He wants to let, he wants her to let go of all of the things that he's done and be happy and build a good friendship and she does forgive him for everything and now she just wants to move forward and be good friends and they do hug and in her in the moment she's feeling everything all at once She's kind of been numbing her feelings part before this, but now she's just feeling it all. And she just hopes that her kids will one day understand um, that she tried to make this work. And here's what I'll say. It is better that you ended this now. It's going to be better for your kids in the long run. And they will, they're not going to hate either one. They're not they're not going to love more than the other. It's not going to be like that. They are going to understand. Right now, they don't. They probably won't get it. And this is going to be a huge change for, for everybody. But um, they'll understand. I think they have. They seem to have great kids. I think they'll understand. So now Jovi and Yara, they will be recommitting to each other. That's what they're going to do. He wants to work on communication, building trust, and make her feel loved and beautiful. More romantic gestures, he says, that he will do for as well. Yara says, um, you are an amazing husband and father. We are lucky to have you. I'm going to open up about my feelings. And they, uh, she also says something in Ukrainian to him as well. I didn't get to write that down, but, um, yeah, she, it went, it went well, uh, of course it would, we, we know they're still together, so it's not like this is a shock or anything, um, but Kalani says you should also add that you're not gonna be going to the fucking strip clubs no more, and he says, yeah, I know, I probably should have added that, <laughs> um, and, um, that concludes the ceremony. Now they are going to dinner. Everyone is invited to Ed and Alyssa's wedding. So that's the other thing. Like I said, we know that they're married. So I'm not even going to go into it. And, uh, yeah, that's, I don't, I don't care. Everyone's happy. Let's just say that. Um, now it's dance time and, uh, everyone's dancing, having a good time. And, uh, that is what it is. And that is the end of the season of The Last Resort. My overall thoughts of this show, because this is a new show. Um, I liked it. It was good. I think they need to do a little better, though, with getting this stuff out and keeping things quiet. Because um, we knew all of this information. We knew that prior to us seeing 
like who was still together and who isn't together. We knew Molly and Kelly weren't together. We knew that Kalani and Oswelli were not together. We've known that for quite some time. We knew that now that Ed and Liz are married. We know this. And we obviously know that Jovi and Yara are going to be fine because they're fine. We, we know that they're, they, we know. We knew this. So that is my one critique is next season, they need to do better with getting this out to everybody on a faster pace. Um, because we now know this was being filmed earlier this year. Um, we find this, we found this out really and truly from reviews on the fucking, um, resort. <laughs> this is how we found out. We knew this was coming. Um, we also knew that Colts had gotten hurt about filming. So we know that they were supposed to be here. So it's like, we knew everything before the show came out. Then the show came out and you're like, okay, here we go. Here it is. But we already know everything that we need to know because no one kept their mouth shut. So it, I think that's the biggest disaster of the show is the fact that we just knew a lot before watching the show. And, um, what I also loved, I loved these therapists. I thought they were incredible. I think maybe they need to go over to Merit at First Sight. Um, not to say that I don't love our experts over there, but they're really lacking. I think we need to have a little revamp over there. Um, I thought they were incredible. And I want to see more of them, actually. I actually want to see more therapy. And I, we, I actually know, I don't know who listens here, who is also a listener of Reality Gaze on their Patreon, but I actually listen, and I actually don't know if it's on their Patreon because I only listen on Patreon, but they actually had an interview with Dr. Petey and we found out like there's so much that happened with the therapist that got cut so much. There's so much that we don't see. And I think we need to see more of them. I loved, I loved seeing, you know, some of the therapies that happened and, and everything. I, we had a lot of that in the beginning and then all of a sudden it just stopped. So I think we need to see more of that. Um, next time if there's a new season. Um, but otherwise I did enjoy it. It was good. And, um, yeah, I'm here for it. But that is it for me on The Last Resort. We'll see you next year, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Um, and you can rate a review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And I have a new thing that I want to start trying. And that is that every four or five star review that we get, I'll read it on the podcast. So if you want to hear your review on the podcast, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're able to rate and review. Um, and if you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to Reality Tea Times 2 on Facebook, Reality Tea Times 2 Podcast on Instagram or Threads, Reality Tea Times 2 Pod on Twitter. You can also find us on Reddit at Reality Tea Times 2 Pod. And uh, you can also email us at realitytimes2 at hotmail.com. And don't forget, you can find us on YouTube at realitytimes2. You can also subscribe, like, comment on there as well. We greatly appreciate that. 
And don't forget that I do have another podcast with my friend Mikkel called Next Take Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different things. Um, we currently have, you know, this number can definitely change, but we currently have about eight episodes. Um, roughly, we've talked about all kinds of different things. We have a lot of fun over there. So please go take a listen to us over at Next Take Podcast, which you can find us at on YouTube at Next Take Podcast. You can also find us on our website, solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. And don't forget, we have a website, and that is at solo.to forward slash reality tea times two. And we also have a Discord, and I believe that's reality tea times two as well. So you can find us there. Um, but that's basically it. That's all the stuff. Of course, everything here will that I've just listed will be in our show notes, all discount codes. Um Special links to everything that we put in our ads are also in our show notes. And yeah, that's basically it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Have you ever thought of starting your very own podcast? Doing the research, I found something that would have made editing easy and seamless and makes the podcasting experience just that much easier. And I am talking about Ludo. This is a podcast software that I use for our editing of our episodes. It is amazing. It is easy. You're also able to get help from chat, doing chats and getting the information that maybe you just need a little more help with. They also have access to different articles that can also help you that have been just godsends for me. Also with the Ludo, you can create clips, you can do your ads, that's just like this very one I'm doing right now, and you can create your trailer very seamlessly just by the clicks of buttons. You can also use the Ludo to publish your episodes just straight from the software. It's so easy. I highly, highly recommend it. You can get access to Ludo by using our unique link, which you can find on our show notes, just down there at the bottom at the show notes. And you can get access to an easy software.